Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today we are once again trying to be a little creative and make our own monster. Uh, a while back I converted a Halloween mask that I had gotten on sale oh, into a green kind of carnage venom looking monster using FOMO, which is a clay foam product that you see me use from time to time. I got another one of those masks and thought, why not try and make something that could belong to the same world as that creature and maybe use a different material this time so that I could show you some variations um, using different materials. Uh, so today I'm going to use that same mask and some warbler and some other random accessories to make him kind of stand out a little bit. So today we are going to build a monster creature using Warbler. Let's get to building. I got this mask from Spirit Halloween at a discount the day after Halloween, one of my favorite days of the year now. The antlers I got from Walmart for like 50 cents a piece. I thought I would use parts of the antlers to make some of the horns for my alien. First I need to remove the burlap and other unneeded parts to ready the surfaces for modification. I needed to make modifications to the jawline also so that it would make space for my chin and neck to fit into the mask. Just make sure that you smooth over these areas with some fine grit sandpaper so that it doesn't scratch up your neck. On most plastic cast parts like these, you'll find seam lines from the injection molding or the molding process in general. Sand it down carefully because the seam lines are usually the thinnest areas of the parts. Go too far down and it will split the item in half. To temporarily secure the horns where I want them, I'm using some low temp hot glue. The warbler that we will add here in a minute will secure it more permanently. The horns kind of bend to one side, so for the ones I'm laying down in the middle, I kind of had to straighten them out just a little bit. Be super careful when you're working with a heat gun. These things can get over 1100 degrees Fahrenheit and can cause some pretty severe burns.
Wormbla is a thermoplastic and a pretty fun material to work with, but it is expensive. I use it to cover over all the glue and texture left from the burlap and to help transition between the horns, head, and teeth. Simply heat it up when the surface becomes flimsy and turns a matte color, push it onto the structure. It attaches very well to itself. I cut off little spots for my horns and work my way around the mask. I thought the eye holes were a little too large, so I'm using some small pieces to create eyelids on the bottom. Heat it up, fold the warbler on itself, and push it on the inside of the eye sockets. I added a few layers to both eyes, did the same basic process around all the horns to make it look like they were coming out of the skin. I needed to cover over these hinges that allow the jaw to move, so I thought I would just build some horns around them. I make a cap that can be glued to the sides of the hinge and allow it to still move freely. Then over the top of the cap, I kind of freeform a horn that points inward to the mouth. To add some more detail, I cut out some various size scales to give more texture to the flat surfaces. This could also just easily be done by adding paint on it, but I really like the raise effect and it gives it a more realistic look.
give everything a base coat with some black spray paint. Gradient effects are a lot easier with an airbrush or spray paint. I lay down the darkest colors on the edges, then work my way to the middle with the lighter and lighter colors. And what's great about it is if you mess up, you can simply just wait for it to dry and try again. He has a very similar paint scheme to the dragon that I painted a while back. Once the spray paint dried, I then hand painted the rest of the details with some acrylic paint. All the horns and scales got a black paint job and the teeth got a, an off-white color. Then of course, like I do with almost everything I make, I had to dirty them up. I went over it with some brown and black acrylic washes. Once that dried, I added a little blood to his teeth and some more paint marks across his eye out of some red acrylic paint. This mask is kind of heavy, so like most of the masks I make, I went with some one inch elastic banding that is supported horizontally and vertically on the back of your head. I used some thin EVA foam to secure the folded over elastic. It may be a little overkill, but I would rather it not fall off of someone's head while they're wearing it, so better safe than sorry. And we are finished. Here is the end result. I think it turned out pretty cool. Definitely very similar to the previous one that I made. If you look at them side by side, you can kind of tell that they could belong to the same world, maybe just a different race within that particular world. Uh, but I thought I'd kind of make it a little more gnarly and give him some more paint and add a nice paint job to him so his skin's kind of got that gradient effect into red. Um, I didn't cover the eyes this time. Last time I put black lenses over it. You could just as easily glue something on the inside. I thought I would leave it open and if I actually use this mask just kind of black out my eyes with some um, costume makeup type stuff and and make it to where it was my actual eyes in there. I do like the effect of adding those little eyelid things underneath his eyes, the bags. Um, I think it looks a lot cooler and it narrows his eyes to make him look even more evil than he did before but yeah. I covered up hinges with horns that way it wasn't as obvious with FOMO it's a little flexible and gives so I could put it over those hinges and cover it up but with Warbla obviously it's very rigid um, and I couldn't do that so it would kind of take away the functionality of opening the jaw up so I didn't want to do that so I just glued those to the top so that it can still kind of move a little bit but 
Overall, I think it turned out pretty cool. Maybe we'll try and make one of these monster masks yourself and impress your friends with your ability to creep them out. Seems to be a consistent thing on the channel. Maybe you'll get some... And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them, much props. I really like that it still lets me move my mouth, but I have to talk really weird because I have to exaggerate it. Peace out.